Dear brothers and sisters, we are pleased tonight and honored here in, in ISC, Islamic Information Society of Calgary, to uh, receive and host Sheikh uh, Abdurrahim Green. He's one of the speakers in our conference, coming conference, inshallah, that will take place on January 10th and 11th this month. And he's uh, Abu Abdullah. Rahim Green, he was born in, uh, to British parents in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, in 1964. And he was educated at a famous Roman Catholic monastic school called Ample Fort College and went on to study history. He studied history in the London University. And while he was studying Quran, uh, his study to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala attracted him to Islam and he embraced Islam in 1988. So he's been Muslim for 20 years. Inshallah we'll have an informal talk with him today for around 40 minutes. Before Isha, 10 or 15 minutes before Isha, inshallah we'll open the floor for your questions. But you are all uh, encouraged and welcome to come with us and participate and attend the conference, inshallah, that will take place on January 10th and 11th, that is called The Power of One. Uh, but I'm not going to make it that long. I will let uh, Sheikh Abdurrahim Green talk to you, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu, nasta'inu, wa nasta'afiru, wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina, wa min sayati amalina. Man yahdihi allahu falamudillala, وما يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وبعد خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحد حد محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محتثاتها وكل محتثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار we begin by praising Allah, we praise Him, we seek His help and we ask for His forgiveness. And we take refuge with Allah from the evil of ourselves and from the evil consequence of our evil actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, no one can misguide. And whomsoever Allah leaves to go astray, no one can guide. And I testify that Allah alone is worthy of worship and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the servant of Allah and his final messenger. After that, the best speech is the book of Allah and the best way is the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst of all the affairs are those matters that are newly introduced in the religion. And every matter that is newly introduced into the religion is an innovation. All of the innovations are misguidance. All misguidance is going astray. And all going astray is in the fire. Brothers, you know, before I actually sort of talk, um, there is something that... Um, there is something that... It may not seem important, but it is important. It's a very noisy AC unit. But that's not the important issue. Every, every nation, every group of people, every culture is at least in part identified by its customs and its manners. So, the mannerisms, the customs that we have is part of what identifies us as belonging to a particular group. Does that make sense? Yeah? Um, every nation is at least in part identified by its customs and its manners. 
Now, the word etiquettes, at least in England, the concept of etiquettes was actually originally developed as a means of separating and dividing the classes. So the upper class, the aristocratic upper class, would of course be the initiator and the inventor and the developer of the etiquettes. And those people who wanted to climb the social ladder would learn the etiquettes in order to, so that they would appear as if they were upper class. But of course what the upper class people would do was change the rules and they did that in order to always expose those people who were trying to climb the ladder but really were not up with the true etiquette. So the point being is that these mannerisms and these etiquettes were constructed as an actual means of dividing people and separating them. Now we Muslims also have some etiquettes, right? We have some mannerisms. And these mannerisms are a characteristic of our nation. If we lose those mannerisms and we fail to practice those etiquettes, then inevitably we become separated and divorced from our identity as Muslims. Now our etiquettes and our mannerisms have come from where? From? From? Yeah, okay, so it came from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam got them from where? From Allah. Yeah? From Allah. I mean, we're talking about here the etiquettes and the mannerisms that are divinely revealed. They're part of our religion. So we have to make a distinction between the practices of the Prophet ﷺ that were incidental and they were just part of the lifestyle that was prevalent at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. Right? So for example, the particular dress that the Prophet ﷺ wore is not sunnah. Very few scholars in Islam, very few said that a particular style of dress is actually a religious virtue. Very few scholars said that. This is something incidental. The Prophet dressed the way his people dressed. Yeah? It is not sunnah to, you know, ride a camel. You know, you wouldn't expect a brother coming here, arriving on a camel, saying, mashallah, brother, sunnah. Yeah? <laughs> you know, that's not the sunnah. The Prophet rode a camel because that's what they had, camels and horses, and so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rode ca- You know, the Prophet drank water. Is it sunnah to drink water because the Prophet drank water? No. It's not a religious virtue. So there are some things that are incidental. Certain types of food that the Prophet ate, and certain mannerisms that were the practice of his people. But that is different from the things that have been taught to us as part of our deen. You know, this is very important, by the way. This is very important. And it is important for Muslims living in the West. Because one of the great challenges that we have, we are inevitably, inevitably we are going to have, is to understand the difference between our culture and our religion. 